The How to Train Your Dragon stories are full of emotions like the ones we've discussed the past month. We see anger, we see fear, we see sadness. Yet in the end, like any great children's story, these negative emotions give way to a happy ending. This, things turn out the best for Hiccup, for Toothless, for the Vikings, and for the dragons. There are many ups and downs to the story, and many challenges to overcome. But in the end, all's well that ends well. In this series, we've talked about taming our emotions. We've addressed the difficulty of dealing with anger in all its forms. We've talked about the crippling power of fear. We've talked about the overwhelming power of sadness. In every one of our lessons, the solution to training our emotions comes back to one thing, our faith in God. When we remember God's blessings, we can overcome our anger. Counting our blessings reminds us of all the good things God has given us, and it helps us to get over our angry feelings. When we are afraid, we can remember that God is in control. We know that God will protect us in the storms of life, and God will always be with us. When we are sad, we can remember God's love. We can find comfort in that love, and God can help us to carry through those sad times. Whatever emotions we face, God's love and grace can replace that emotion with joy. Even in the worst of times and the worst of places, God can fill our hearts with joy. Today's Bible story will take us into a prison cell in the dead of night, where two wrongfully accused missionaries were not only able to find joy, but share that joy with others. This is Acts 16, verses 22 through 34. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape, so the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced, because they all believed in God. Paul and Silas were thrown in prison for setting a girl free from demons. They had done something good through the power of God, and they were being punished for it. Many believers were facing similar persecution at the time, including prison, beatings, and even death. And Paul and Silas had to know that death was a possibility for them. They had every right to feel angry, afraid, and sad. Yet Paul and Silas were joyful. They led the prisoners in singing hymns, and when God heard their song of praise, he shook the walls of the prison to the ground. When the earthquake happened, it was the jailer who suddenly felt afraid. He believed the prisoners would escape, and he and his family would be killed. When he saw the faith of Paul and Silas, he prayed to receive Jesus as his Savior. Jesus turned the jailer's fear into joy, just as he turned Paul and Silas' despair into joy. If Jesus can bring joy to that darkened prison, he can bring joy to anyone, anytime, anywhere. When we focus on God, even in bad times, we can have joy. Emotions are how we experience life. Some emotions are positive and some are negative. All emotions are an important part of being human, even anger, fear, and sadness. But if we let these negative emotions run unchecked, they can bring us down and even get us into trouble. Jesus wants to help us tame our emotions. He wants to give you the Holy Spirit who can lift you up when you are sad. He wants us to rely on prayer and the Bible when we need courage. He wants us to give us peace when we are troubled. He wants to fill our hearts with joy, even in bad times. If you're tired of trying to tame your emotions on your own, you can invite Jesus to be your Savior today. You can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, who will be by your side in good times and bad. When you ask Jesus to forgive your sins and come into your life, you will receive the blessing of eternal life. You will also know that God is always a prayer away, right by your side. If you've already received Jesus and are still struggling with your emotions, take heart. 
You are not alone. It takes a lifetime to learn to rely on God to tame our emotions. Day by day, one emotion at a time, one prayer at a time, God will help us transform our bad emotions into joy. Jesus came to give us new life and joy. If we focus on God, we can have that joy, no matter what life brings our way. Let's thank God for Jesus, and let's ask him to fill all our hearts with joy. Let's close in prayer. Dear God, give us joy in good times and bad. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.